Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to start with logical reasoning. It is yet another important topic, not only from net exams perspective, but since it appears usually in most of the other government exams. So let's get started. The main aim behind putting questions from this section is to assess your thinking capability and to know how well you can apply logic. Logic is a term which we hear very often. It is a method of reasoning to obtain valid and justifiable inferences. And based on this, we developed a notion of logical reasoning. It is simply a process of using premises or in simpler terms, say statements to arrive at valid conclusions. In the later part of this video, we are going to discuss what do we mean by valid conclusions. For now, let's get more deeper into logical reasoning. It can be broadly classified into two parts, deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, which is also known as logical deduction or deductive logic, is a process of reasoning from multiple premises to obtain a logically valid conclusions. For example, let's consider two premises. First one says, all crows are black. And second one says, this bird is a crow. So, the logical conclusion that can be derived from these two premises is that this bird is black. Deductive reasoning can be of two types. Immediate, in which only one premise is used to get a valid conclusion and mediate in which two or more than two premises gives a valid conclusion. Syllogism is a type of mediate reasoning which uses two premises only to obtain a valid conclusion. Syllogism is quite important from exam's point of view as many questions are asked from this topic. Coming to inductive reasoning, it is a method of reasoning in which observing repeated specific circumstances leads to making a generalized decision. For example, consider these two premises. Most basketball players are tall and Jordan is a basketball player. It leads to a conclusion that says Jordan must be tall. One thing here is to note that although the first premise here may not look like a specific circumstance at first glance, but it is. Although we are using the word most in this sentence, yet we are not generalizing this to all the basketball players. And this property of inductive reasoning makes it quite different from deductive reasoning. So let's compare deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning and see how they differ. The first main difference is that deductive reasoning moves from general to specific. Like in the previous example as shown here, we see all crows are black. So we have generalized the color to each and every member of the crow community. Whereas in inductive reasoning, we move from specific to general, as shown in this example. The other main difference is in the nature of conclusion. In deductive reasoning, conclusions are necessarily true, given that the premises are also true. Like here, assuming that these two premises are true, we know for sure that this conclusion is absolutely true. There is no doubt about that. In inductive reasoning, conclusions are probabilistic, even if the premises holds true. Here, although these two statements are true, yet we cannot infer correctly from them that Jordan must be tall. There are chances that we might be, that he might 
be short also. We do not know for sure. Hence, there is an element of probability involved in inductive reasoning. Now, let's go ahead and understand what do we mean by an argument. So, an argument is a type of communication in the form of statements which tries to persuade its audience to adapt a particular position about any topic and determine the degree of truth of the conclusions. We further need to go through how these arguments are structured. So basically, we deal with validity of arguments, logical nature of premises, and the rules of getting a valid conclusions. So, as I said earlier in the later part of the video, we will cover the validity of conclusion. Therefore, here we are going to discuss the validity of arguments in general. This is an important concept to understand as sometimes UGC net has asked direct questions from this portion. So let's see. A valid argument cannot have true premises and false conclusion. Arguments validity depend upon whether it has a logical form or not and not on the actual truth or falsity of corresponding premises and conclusion. For example, some Indians are mathematicians and therefore some mathematicians are Indian. This is a valid argument. Whereas, some Indians are smart and some smart people are rich. Therefore, some Indians are rich. This is an invalid argument as it can happen that all the smart people who are rich are not Indians. The next important concept to learn is proposition. A proposition is a sentence which makes a statement and gives a relationship between two or more than two terms. A proposition is assumed to be true and all conclusions can be drawn from it. Any given proposition has four parts quantifier, subject, predicate, and copula. These four components together constitute a proposition. A quantifier is a type of determiner which specifies quantity. All, some are some examples of quantifier. Subject is an entity about which something is being said in the sentence. Predicate tells us something about the subject. And lastly, copula is the relation between the subject and predicate. Consider an example. All human beings are mortal. This is a proposition. In this statement, all is a quantifier. Human beings is the subject, mortal is the predicate, and R is the copula. So here, all is the word quantifying the number of people or human beings that we are talking about. Human beings are the subject as we are talking about them. Mortal is the predicate as it is telling us about the nature of subject. R is the copula as it is explaining the relationship between human beings and mortality. So friends, that's it for today. We will continue with propositions in the next video. Till then, take care. Thank you.